I really believe we're going to have another uh, second GFC in the long, not long time future because of the reason of the endless printing of the Reserve Bank, printing millions and millions of dollars. At a certain point, there'll be either a default or something's going to happen. I don't say I know, but I want to ask you a personal view, Andrea. What do you think in a repeat of the GFC that happened in 2008-9, what would you think will be the reaction of Bitcoin and all the cryptocurrencies across the board? What, what is your personal opinion? Uh, what you want me, me to say... <laughs> I don't want you to say... I don't want How you to tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> tell me what you think. There's a big okay. difference between what a I want and a, what you think. A lot of people are slightly gleeful about the idea of a global financial crisis that will send Bitcoin to the moon and make everybody in this room a multi-millionaire and all of that. Beware what you wish for. I think it really depends on the timing and the level of crisis we're talking about. I think small scale regional crises in general are beneficial for alternative systems of money because they, they demonstrate why a different way might be better. And they give people choices. They give people a safe haven. They give people an opportunity to exit a broken system. They give people an opportunity to escape an oppressive government. You know, move their money across a border as a refugee. Uh, send money home as an immigrant. Whatever. Uh, protection against inflation. Protection against currency controls. Protection against potentially one day war, genocide, and other crises like that? Absolutely. If we had a global financial crisis today, the investment that is currently going into Bitcoin, from the middle class, from startup companies, from venture capital, from banks, from consultants, from all of this, disappears. Right? Because people who don't have money can't invest money. Right? We saw this happen in Greece. People did not flock to buy gold or Bitcoin and protect their investments. Why? Because they didn't have any bloody money. People ask me, why did they leave money in the Greek banks? They didn't leave money in the Greek banks. They didn't have any money in the Greek banks. That was their paycheck hitting every Friday. and It was stuck there when it hit. And they took it out as fast as they could and then try to make it until next Friday. And then their employer put the money back in the Greek banks for them. What do you do there? How do you escape that? People start selling their belongings. People start buying other assets. That is not something to wish for. I hope we don't see a massive global financial crisis. I don't think it's good for anyone. Obviously, it's painful for a lot of people. It kills a lot of people. It's very damaging to the world economy. We will see regional crises, though. And I hope we have a gradual, non-violent, copacetic transition to a superior technology that serves the needs of people. If you read history, you know that's probably not going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But at the same time, I'm going to hope for that. Because the alternative is ugly, sudden, chaotic, disruptive, painful, sometimes violent, sometimes bloody. And you will see people being persecuted. It's already happening in Venezuela. Uh, Bitcoin miners are being arrested and given jail sentences, sometimes up to life in prison, for mining an alternative currency, or as they call it, treason and sedition. This is happening today. Let's hope that doesn't spread. That's not the way to achieve success. The way to achieve success is not to have desperate people have no other choice. It's to have informed people have a choice and make it because they want to. And you're all here because of that. No one forced you to be here. That's how we'd like to keep it. 